Wow, that worked. Any inf- any investors here? You, you could... <laughs> that... What's that? Good job. Good job. Oh. Thank you. So that was a case where you know they did those two or three interviews. They knew that it, they wanted it to be a provocative and um, kind of edgy documentary about social media and how it's affecting you know uh, the political arena. And they sort of said, okay, let's make a sizzle that would kind of capture that spirit. Um, it, there was certainly a lot of thoughts about graphics. Let's like cr- kind of create a look so that the whole, it feels like it's a whole experience when you're watching and I think, and they're using that to try to raise the money now. What else was, it, were, were like challenges in terms of when you got your material? Um, it was just a lot of research. It w- that was, that was um, a big part of it because the internet is so vast. So trying to find um, these memes, it was just, you could just, there was just so many. So we had interns um, who worked on it too. And um, like I said, the client was pretty picky about he like the Hillary Pinocchio thing. I think he came up with. Um, so it was just a lot of research and finding the clips and the right clips and how to integrate it and everything. So, so that's like an example where the sizzle reel has like maybe I don't know like 15, 20 percent is new footage. You know, they filmed the interview with with that congressman and the. the you know, the academic, and and the rest of it is non-existing footage. So nobody would assume that the documentary is going to be a 90-minute montage of of YouTube clips. But at least what, you know, the presentation of a sizzle, you know, it's also probably there's other materials they're submitting when they're trying to raise money, you know, pitch sheets and budgets and all that. But what it does is it sort of... um, you know, in a, in a way, it softens the battlefield a little bit. Um, it, this is interesting. We um, Ben Stiller, the actor, he directed a Showtime series that is either started or it starts very soon um, called Escape at Danamora. It's about um, a prison escape. Right. Yeah. So he hired us um, about two years ago, and he said, oh, I don't need a sizzle reel, but I need something that when I'm in my meeting with Showtime... And I say I need this. I need ten million dollars instead of six million dollars, or whatever it was. They will understand. And we didn't really. He didn't have any material. So what he did is he took he took a crew on a weekend, went up to upstate New York with drones, hired a drone cameraman, and shot a bunch of uh, drone footage of prisons in in that region and forests where because it's about a prison break. And we created a three-minute video of the drone footage that has music under it. And that's it. And he used that to just before... I mean, it's Ben Stiller. He's an A-list actor. And he still wanted to have in that meeting a piece that would just kind of set the tone. Sometimes these are nothing more than, you know, setting the tone. Right. But it seems like you can achieve an awful lot regard, uh, regardless of the where on the spectrum of the... the you know, financially speaking, that the filmmakers are at. Like, so, you know, obviously he was hiring drones, and he's got a lot of money, but you can also work with somebody who doesn't have a ton of money as well, correct? I mean, you just yeah, have I to mean, set expectations. I mean, Digital War was not, you know, the budget, the big, biggest budget was probably hiring Shannon, you know, just kind of, that's probably yeah. the biggest, the right. big, and the graphics, you know, but that isn't necessarily something that a lot of filmmakers can't do on their own, you know? I mean, a lot of, one of the things about Sizzles is, you know, when you when you meet documentary filmmakers, even here at Doc NYC, a mm-hmm. lot of them created sizzles before they created their movies. And um, you start realizing, you you know, you ask them, well, how did that come about? It's like, yeah, we sat there, we we shot for a, a week, and we started to make a sizzle, and now they have a movie here. Yeah, uh, but I you can consult with them because you've worked with so many different filmmakers, right? On so many different di- coming at it from so many different dimensions, this type of thing. And they kind of, even if they've made a number of films, they kind of still only this coming from the same perspective usually. Yeah, I so mean, so you can provide all that. I think it's there's, helpful to there's certainly there's things that we're always trying to hit on uh, in these pieces, you know, and there are the obvious things. It's not, you know, it's not brain surgery. It's like we're trying to hit on why this documentary is relevant and what um, and the characters. That's a big thing and and I guess you know 
other right, like story. I mean, we want it to be as diverse as possible. So it could be, you know, funny, but it's also there's some tension, there's challenges. It can't just hit on one note. You want it to have, you know, be multifaceted, multidimensional, um, to keep the audience entertained, really, to to be compelling enough that they want to invest or they want to to watch it. Yeah, we're always trying to sort of show that, like this piece, like it. It's not a trailer, but it's showing why this it it it's a movie version of this is makes sense. So sometimes you're kind of telling, you know, oh, you're showing, oh, you, even just watching that piece that we just watched, you're like, oh wow, this is really relevant. Oh wow, they're gonna get these really important political people that are right in the front lines of this issue. So you start sort of coming to it like you understand what the movie is gonna look like and feel like and and its attitude, and um, it's it's very amorphous. It 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 has to do with about trying to present what the movie is gonna be, the experience for investors, so that they could have a confidence in what that movie is gonna be. Right. So it's it's a little bit uh, meatier than a trailer because it's longer. So there's more story. There's more character. There's more. Um, everything. M so. And more opportunity to kind of fail. So it's really important that... Yeah. I mean, we're, we work on these quite a lot. We spend, a, you know, several weeks doing these. Uh, not several weeks, but it can be a few weeks. And sometimes it is several weeks. Definitely. Well, yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, there's a lot of, it, there's a lot of um, challenges because not only are you trying to cr create the presentation, but you're often in, in a situation where sometimes the filmmakers are seeing the movie for the first time. And it it's a weird experience because they haven't filmed any anything. You know, like with Digital War here, they were seeing clips cut together for the first time. They hadn't edited anything. So it, it's also, uh, there's sometimes a little disconnect between um, when they hire us. This is a case, though, of just hiring a vendor for us creating it for a filmmaker. If a filmmaker's doing it themselves, obviously that's not the same case. But with us, sometimes one of the challenges is just everybody sort of realizing, oh man, this is what the movie's gonna look like. And it sort of is and it isn't. So that, uh, But we're constantly saying like, no, no, this is just the sizzle trailer, it's not the movie. But sometimes there's a, there's a little gray area. Confusion. Yeah, a little confusion. Yeah. Um, should we show, I was, gonna, I was thinking maybe we would show uh, this other one, uh, F. Jackie. Sure, F. Jackie, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I just wanted to say, though, yeah. that that looked kind of expensive uh, because of the amount of work that went into it. Now we know uh, that uh, e good editing is... Uh, you I know, mean, yeah, the, the budget on but that was probably, I don't know, it was maybe yeah, $10,000. Okay. So, so that is a lot, and I could you imagine... you got to raise some, money to... Yeah, I could imagine people in the audience being like, what? We're trying to raise money, not spend money. Yeah. You know, and I get it's an it. investment, folks. Yeah, but you, spend you know, money to make money. Sorry. In this case, this filmmaker said, "Oh, maybe they raised twenty thousand, or they had twenty thousand of their of money, and they said, why 'Why don't we go shoot? Oh, wow, we got Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Let's let's, you know, we got that interview. Let's shoot that, and let's shoot a couple more, and then we'll we'll set aside some money to make uh, this other piece." Um, so yeah, the budget is definitely a tricky, it's a thicket, it's a, it's a tricky question because yeah. you're trying to raise money, but yet you have to sort of put money towards this and you're trying to figure out what's appropriate. Yeah, well, just it makes it a lot easier to raise money when you have obviously something very tangible and very exciting. But um, I remember on, on Digital Wars, we were, there was a big question about like, are we really doing these fancy graphics? You know, because that seemed like a real big expense, but that was what the producer wanted to do because they wanted the investor, potential investors, to understand that there's gonna be this cool graphic element that's gonna be very contemporary. So that was important for them to, to put that in the sizzle. Sometimes it's not the case. There's pieces that w we're going to show, hopefully still, that where Shannon's worked off like dailies and it doesn't have that like fancy graphic. So it's also uh, that time is money. So if, well, in this situation, he didn't have a lot of footage, but it took a lot of time to find the materials. Um, in other situations, the filmmaker has so much footage, so many, you know, dozens and dozens of hours of dailies. It just doesn't make sense 
to for the budget to go through all of it. So you have to go back to them and say, we need to pare this down. Um, so you can save money if you are very specific in, in what you provide and, you know, and, and what you want. This digital war also went through a lot of revisions. So again, that you know, adds to cost. But if you come in specific, and all filmmakers, they know better than everybody what the film is about and what, you know, what it can be, what the best footage is. So you, know, you just have to help, and that you know, brings the cost down when, when it can be done in a more timely schedule. Pre-editing. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and that can certain you know filmmakers going through making selects. Is, again, this is a case where they're working with like a vendor like us, but they could also have their own editors do this, and and they don't even you know, or they're doing it themselves, and that's not it's not the same case. Um, this other clip, okay, let set we're gonna it up. yeah, and let me set this one up because this is also a different scenario. This is about um, a documentary pitch, a sizzle on uh, this comedian, Jackie Martling, who is one of, maybe some people have heard of him, he was Howard Stern's Jackie head, the Joke Man. Jackie the Joke Man, one of Howard Stern's head writers. So the filmmakers of this one went and filmed just for the sizzle. There was no purpose of their filming other than for the piece that you're gonna watch a few minutes of. So it's not like they were even planning you know, they were only going to make a movie on Jackie, a documentary, if the sizzle got got found money. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's a fishing kind so, of So, yeah. So, everything that was in it was filmed over like a two or three week stretch um, where they just got some crew and went and got Jackie and put him in these places. And, um, you know, maybe it cost, I don't know, a budget of ten to 20000 overall. Okay. And I did want to mention that we are going to go to questions uh, in about a, I don't know, just not, lo not long. Okay. We'll go to questions on the wall. So we're going to run uh, F. Jackie, and we probably will only watch about half of this as well. That, that felt like a long trailer to some degree. I don't mean to insult anyone. Yeah, I mean, it's it, not was le it was less it than five minutes, and it moved really fast. And I think the producers... Want, you know, like I said, they only shot for two weeks. So they filmed him doing a radio show and a podcast and walking on the beach and showing off his, his, his office. And they did one interview and then they d picked up another interview. And they probably spent $10,000 on the production, maybe less. Okay, not a lot. And then there was a lot of YouTube clips and archival clips. And it was, let's make a sizzle that's going to show appeal to the Howard Stern audience that's fast and fun and tells you that this should be a documentary that you know, can be made and, and can sell. And they're, that's what they're using to raise the money. Mm -hmm. And that's it. They're not using anything but that. And it shows a lot of things. It shows that, Jack, that, that Jackie guy's involved. It, it shows that there's going to be a celebrity quotient. They drop name drop, we name drop Howard Stern all over the place, so you know that that's an aspect to it. And it sort of gives an investor, you know, you could take that into, you know, any place. I don't know if they'd want to make the movie, but you could certainly w walk that into, you know, N Netflix or a grant or a sure, private investors. Sure. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, you, you could pull the trailer from the scene. Sure. Or you, and you can incorporate some of this in the film, too, right? I mean, if you're shooting original content, couldn't some of it also they Absolutely. could use it for it? You know, but in this case, so the, it the producers a, only shot it, it just to create no, this. No, right, system. I understand. Yeah. But I'm, yeah, if the movie's greenlit, I'm sure you they'll use you know, some of those scenes. Right, that's, that's uh, uh, a yeah. money saver Yeah. in that regard, right? Um, so those are two very different examples yep. for, for two different very go uh, sets of goals. And for a different audience, too. You R know, well, this is obviously more of like a raunchy, you know, kind of celebrity bio documentary, whereas Digital War is more contemporary, kind of edgy, you know, con you know, provocative story of today, you know. And then we've done other ones that are just more in the PBS zone, more all kinds of stuff. But I think F. Jackie, do, it does a great job of making him... Um, a central character who's likable and he's funny and you know you can hang a whole film on him. Yeah, that's a I good mean, point. One of the things they said on that, they're like, well, in the sizzle, and I don't, I don't know how funny it is. I mean, it's kind of funny. It's like kind of old, old Catskills humor, I guess. But uh, 
they're, you know, they were like, we wanted to really feel funny. So we packed in a lot of jokes, jokes, jokes. And that's not always the case. And, you know, like something like that, it's really has a high level of editing skill like that piece. But they don't all need to have that. And that this one just was the case because that's what it was called. But a lot of times, you know, nobody should feel intimidated like, oh, my God, that looked really incredibly edited and that isn't something that you have that skill set. I think, you know, not every story demands that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have other ones that are less uh, kind of edited that intensely. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, and so the next step, I guess, would be to... Uh, I, I, if you're you're sitting in a in, in a meeting, you also have to kind of talk it, about it too, right? I mean, I don't know. Do you go over s the salient types of points that is that part of the um, I don't know. The, the I, I think that a lot of filmmakers think about these in terms of well, I'm doing a verbal pitch and I'm playing this. You know, the way that like a lot of these sort of pitch pitch events happen. Um, like Doc NYC has a pitch event and Hot Docs has a pitch event and sometimes they're playing it and um, they're also with in the room and that's sort of, yeah. they're working in conjunction a little bit. Yeah. Shannon, have you had a, op uh, how many of, uh, roughly have you w worked on of these types of uh, sizzlers? Um, I mean probably roughly. 30. That's a lot. Yeah. That's quite a few. <laughs> Have you had to collaborate or uh, sat with, let's say, the film's editor, assuming there is one, obviously? If you've have you had cases um, where... Yeah, sometimes there. I, I don't know if I've sat with them, but they're often involved because they you, sometimes you need to go back to them and say, I need this, I need that, um, you know, or just technical, this shot is a little messed up. Do you have another version, do you have a higher resolution, stuff like that. So yeah, they can they can definitely be involved. So not sitting there wa watching over your shoulder. <laughs> no. <laughs> or or no. you're something where you're collaborating that closely. Um typically, typically what happens is that w so Jeremy might have a meeting with them the first part and then um, we'll get notes on what they want, you know, like a general overview of this is what it's about and this is what we're aiming to do. And then um, you know, we'll look at footage. We'll take about maybe a week to come up with the first cut. Um, I'll do it and then show Jeremy, and then he'll revise and give me notes, and then we'll send it to the client once we feel like it's really solid. And then um, it goes from there. And then they have notes, and we revise and revise and revise and mix and color correct and... Um, it's a process. Yeah, and it's different from a normal trailer or even a film because there's a lot going on. You know, like I said earlier, you're trying to get in character. You're trying to get in uh, setting. You're trying to show that this is, um, that there's filmmaking going on here, that this isn't a story that just the news, that Frontline should do, but that you, the filmmaker, are the person to do it. So there's also an attempt to kind of like bring a little bit of a vision to right. the material. And that's done, like you say, you ha you're meeting with them first often, and so that's the creative meeting. Yeah. You and go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, so, because I could see like, uh, you have this wonderful, you have an agreement with a, some a kind of a really strong central uh, subject. Uh, you know, in this clip's case, uh, uh, Jackie Martling. And, um, but I'm not really, I don't, I'm coming to whether or not it, I know it or not, I don't necessarily have that strong a vision for what I'm trying to say about this guy. But I have him, he's given me some footage, I'm doing stuff. Uh, so when I walk in with you, or you, you, that's where you, I imagine you could come in quite handy. Do you identify, they are not really talking about this film in a very, very, um, uh, maybe realized way. We know? hope that the filmmakers that we're working with really have a sense of, of the movie that they want. We have been in situations, and Shannon and I could tell you war stories, where we'll producers... A war, one war story. Well, like a producer will go, and maybe it's a producer who self-financed something, and they have gone and filmed, you know, 50 hours and not really sure what their movie is. And maybe it's, you know, it's again, it's polar bears in Ant Antarctica, but they're, they filmed and filmed and filmed and they don't really know how to shape it into a movie. And then they'll come to us and just be like, okay, make a sizzle. And that's really, really difficult. Well, they're missing the point. There's, yeah. there's not understanding. Exactly. They're wanting to... 
Yeah, like so. The best a, filmmakers that we work with are the ones, and this is also regardless if they work with us or not. The best filmmakers who are thinking about sizzles are the ones that are like, I want to make a sizzle to execute why I'm going to make an incredible movie and why this is going to be an incredible movie. So they're already understanding the function of a sizzle. The sizzle is not the movie. The sizzle is a way to show that they are going to make this into an incredible movie. Um, I was thinking, like, uh, there's, a, there's another, we could maybe show a little, I was thinking uh, Free Money. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Because I feel like that's a filmmaker who, who really had a strong sense of it. We don't. We could also just show half of that one. Um, yeah, so Free Money, it was uh, or is a film about uh, experiments in Kenya with universal basic income. Um, and uh, is centered on this village where they begin to give, a, a charitable donation begins to give villagers $12 a month. Um, and it's an experiment and it has challenges and uh, the overarching thing is like how, how much this is going to change their lives. Um, so it can, you know, there's some negative things, there's some positive things. It's kind of a human story that is uh, about a topic that's a little political and so in the, the news. The first thing we did, we had to explain. Talking to so the mic, gonna, so talking to the mic. The first thing we did, we, we had to explain what, what the heck universal basic currency is. Right, so we do that with, we'll uh, sh we'll show, yeah, we'll you'll see. But um, that kind of gets it started. So there's different sections where the first section is, you know, kind of explanatory. Yeah. Um, but th this was challenging because a lot of the, so there was an English speaking woman who is interviewed. She's with the charitable organization. And then the villagers, of course, don't speak English. So that was really hard because we didn't have great translations. And there, there was a translator, but it was kind of like, I think it was just done as a wild track. And it was really hard to keep up with. So as an editor, that was extremely challenging because I don't speak that language. So it was hard to do like <laughs> a fine cut on you know, uh, words. Um, so that was, that was tough. Mm. This was a case where the filmmaker, I think she went to Africa for two weeks, something like that, and she brought a crew, so she had raised some money, and she had then um, shot for two weeks, filmed in this whole village, and then came to us so that she could get the rest of the money. So then they took this piece that we'll show a couple minutes of, and then took it to grants. Sometimes these are used for grants, you know? Some, it's not just w showing Netflix or HBO. I think she took it to a grant, and then she took it to other broadcast makes venues. Makes sense, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. All right, so we'll so show this, we'll show a little bit of it. Yeah, we'll show then, two minutes. And then we're gonna come back to your questions, so maybe yep. start thinking about that. Um, yeah. So this, uh, uh, just if you could run free money. And you'll see the beginning um, what is using found footage, and then the rest of the stuff is original footage. How does this set? Yeah, let again. me give a shout those out to people. Lauren uh, DeFilippo, who, uh, that's her project, and she gave us permission to sort of do that, so, to show this one. But, you know, th this has a number of, like, sort of tropes that are always essential in, um, in these kind of pieces. And... Um, one, there's a clear explanation of what the topic is. So sort of right at the beginning, Shannon did this kind of media montage that explains what, what, what it is, you know? So before it goes into, you know, all the footage that she shot in Africa, we, you get a sense of like, there's a big picture topic here. Um, the other thing that this does that we do a lot, which is it has those little shout outs of characters, you know, where it actually says their names, you know, Wellington, and it and gives each character names. And um, we tend to do that a lot. It's, it's a really conventional trope. It's not anything, it, you know, fancy. But it, what it does is it sort of reinforces to the investors and to grants and people who are looking to invest in your movie that it is a story of characters. You know, that's always something we're trying to sort of showcase in these pieces. It's not a story about a topic. It's a story about people. And that's always a way for us to do it in a piece like this, is just to kind of have a little middle section where we drill into the characters. 
Um, and this also has, you know, a lot of sort of talking heads of, you know, official people, which kind of makes, reminds you that like, oh, this is a topic in, you know, in the zeitgeist, in the news today. And that's also something that we're sort of trying to do. So we're not necessarily trying to like wow you with look at how great the sizzle is. We're trying to sort of get, furnish you with all these things in it that say to you, wow, this is gonna be a really good movie that is relevant and that is gonna be emotional and personal and I could see it being a great, great documentary. You know, do we care if the sizzle's great? Sure. But, you know, I, it, it's less important than it ha, ha, sort of containing the right messaging. Let's go to uh, audience questions. Um, if you, uh, we have a microphone over here um, on your left, audience. And um, if you uh, could just be aware, I think they're shooting this. So that's something you should keep in mind, I guess. Uh, but anybody who has a question. And uh, while we're waiting for anybody to get, a lot of people ask us about like, where are you getting all this music? What you know, right. we don't have a composer. That's a question we get a lot. And uh, most of the time, we just use whatever. What, it, what are you using library music in these? Yeah, there's, um, there's, I'm sure you know. There's a bunch of stock music places. Uh, Audio Network we use a lot. Jingle Punks, Extreme Music. Um, there's like four or five or six of them that we use. Um, you know, you have to buy the license and... Yeah, so, uh, but a lot of times you don't even need to license music for a, a, a sizzle trailer right. because it's an uh, internal piece. It's right. not being used, you know, publicly. So you could use, you know, the Rolling Stones if you wanted to. We tend not to do that. We, sometimes it, it makes people in the room wonder, like, right, do you think we're going to really license the Rolling Stones? So we, we <laughs> right. tend not to do you, that. You make it reasonable. We make uh, it. Sometimes you could use a score piece of, yeah. from a different film. And sometimes the filmmakers, maybe they've made a previous movie and they have score from that movie. And yeah. we're just kind of figuring out where to get this music, you know? Right. In the we case of a finished film, you would try to use the score. Um, or not, or library music. Or it's often a mix a little bit of score, and then one or two library songs as well. <coughs> Hi. Can you just tell you who you are? And Hi, I'm Stephanie. I'm a, a first-time filmmaker. I just finished a short that I want to continue working on uh, as a feature, expanding on different characters and the topic. Um, and going forward in a fundraising sizzle, would, would you recommend also like shooting more and adding those additional characters? And in terms of like thinking of how to go about editing um, fundraising um, sizzle, how would what's the mindset between that and a trailer that I should be mindful of and you know editing that together? Thank you. Uh, you guys all heard that question. Good. Um, well, it's a, it's a question that actually came up. Um, I could speak really specifically about this question because the great filmmaker, uh, documentary filmmaker, Steve James, who did Hoop Dreams and he did uh, Life Itself about Roger Ebert. Is, is, has he been on the your Interrupters? podcast? Interrupters? Oh, many times. Yeah, just great legendary filmmaker. He made a short that was on the New Yorker, um, New Yorker website. And it was a short featuring um, about a young rodeo rider and he then called us up and said, I want you to make a sizzle because I want to turn this into a feature. And I want to use, I want the feature to be more expansive and show more character. So like the first thing you can imagine that we thought was like, wait a second, you're Academy Award nominated Steve James. Why do you, can't you just show the short and just say, hey, I'm taking the short and I want to now expand it. But he actually felt no. He wanted to actually show, even somebody of his stature felt like he needed a sizzle that would sort of show beyond what the short was. So I think that was in, uh, like a big in lesson to us that it even if there's a short and you want to expand it, if there's more material that you have or more characters, it could make sense to turn that into a sizzle. Um, how long is your short? It's 26 minutes. 26, 26 minutes. So like a good, you know, you might say like, okay, well, let's take that 26 minutes. Let's turn it into a four or five minute sizzle. Let's add some new material. 
and if they want to watch the short, they can, but it, it, and they can, obviously, but it would have a sort of a reason to sh- sort of show that this is a, a bigger story. I know, I know, for, I know more cases where a, film, a filmmaker, as a narrative filmmaker, has made a short, you know, a, a fiction short, and then wanted to make a, a uh, feature, yeah. and the whole message or theme has uh, modified. So I, I don't see why that wouldn't also be the case for a documentary, potentially. You know, you're making, you made a short, but as you're making the feature version of it, it, it can change in a lot of ways. You can also start with what you have already and then see what's missing. You know, um, you want to start with explanatory, you know, you need clips that explain what your movie is. And if you don't feel you sufficiently have that, you can record voiceover. Um, that's an in- inexpensive way to do it. Um, or you could just start it and then see where the holes are and then film just that. I think in Free Money, there was a, uh, an additional interview that got put in because you know it needed some explanation. Let me piggyback on that a bit, which is I think one of the things about sizzle reels is you have to constantly figure out how you're going to tell part of the story when you don't have the material often. So any of this stuff can work. Photos can work. You text. know, stock photo, stock footage, text. You know, you saw it with Digital War. You know, it's a lot of text. Also, sometimes the text is giving, explaining what the documentary is going to do. Our crew is going to embed for, t- you know, two years, blah, blah, blah. Or we're going to follow three people over a course of a year. So sometimes there is that little informational text in there as well to kind of help steer the viewer into understanding what your vision is. And sometimes a good way to start is with um, like a cold open. So you just pick a scene from your movie that's kind of compelling and maybe doesn't even explain anything, but it will draw in the audience and, you know, and then you go from there. Okay. Uh, again, don't be shy, guys, if you have any, any Other questions. questions. If you have, yeah. Hi, how are you? What's I feel like name? I just got farther from you guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of true. What's your name? Who are you My born? name is Josh. Hi. Hi. Um, I guess just sort of a rapid fire. I call you on the phone and say, hey, I want to do this sizzle. What, what would your like first five to ten questions be for me? Probably what, you know, what you've already shot, what the function, uh, you know, a lot of times we're asking, what's, what's the function of the sizzle? And sometimes you don't know. You're like, well, you know, I guess I, you're trying to raise money. But it's one thing that we don't, I don't know what necessarily a, a lot of producers do with their sizzle. You know, do they? And we don't always, we're not always um, privy to whether or not it works. You know, we, our job is to kind of make the best piece that we can, but we don't know what happens after it leaves us. But usually, you know, we're going to ask somebody, I, we'd ask like, well, how much material is there? How much have you already shot? How much are you looking to create out of stuff that hasn't even already been shot, you know, like with Digital War, like how much are we having to kind of create materials? And um, uh, just, I guess, basic stuff about, you know, what's the time plan, how far along are you? I guess that's about it. Yeah, when do you need it by? (laughs) Yeah. How quickly? (laughs) And some some filmmakers, when they do hire us, they do sit in, and, and sit and work with us for a while. We just did um, a sizzle for a new uh, documentary on Alvin Ailey, I, who's the choreographer. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but that filmmaker like sat and worked with us for quite a for the whole stretch. So that was a case where they wanted to be in the room with us. That's not always the case. Hmm. We have another question. Yeah, I was just curious. Uh, first, thanks for uh, showing those trailers. Uh, that was really helpful. I was also curious, Jeremy, you talked at the start about how there's no hard and fast rules in this, but there are some sweet spots. Yes. Could you share those sweet spots for us? Yes, thank you for asking. Um, the sweet spot seems to be that it's four to five minutes, okay? But I don't, I wouldn't put that down as a rule because I have also spoken to people at uh, PBS and ITVS, which funds a lot of documentaries, and I know that they like it longer, okay? And they're more interested in seeing 15 minutes, which is not really uh, technically a sizzle trailer. You know, a 15-minute 
um, is often just like here's a here's a chunk of what we're what we've edited and here's some material here's some scenes, but what we're seeing more and more is that uh, venues grants uh, pitches private equity channels Netflix it's a there's a there's a length of about four to five minutes they shouldn't be too slick. You know, where somebody in the room says like, oh, well, you just hired some fancy trailer. Yeah, why do you need their money? Yeah, why do you need them? You just hired these fancy editors to do this. So they should still kind of feel like they, uh, they're made by filmmakers. So they shouldn't be too slick. And they need to kind of get into it topically. And some of the things I said before about really make the, the topic clear and the characters clear. And then most important, always for us, is that there is a three-act structure. And that's something that we haven't mentioned yet. Oh. Um, they need to have a beginning, middle, and end. They can't just be like, look at this topic. It needs to really be like, here's the introduction of, the, of, of this documentary and this story. Here's the conflict in the middle. And here's where the resolution is at the end. Even if you, we looked at that, if we think about the Jackie Martling one, there's the introduction of who Jackie Martling is. Introduction, act one. We set him up as this comedian. He knows every joke. Act two, there's some conflict. He was on Howard Stern. He gets fired. Act three, now he's, he's retired or semi-retired, and he's looking back on his career. So there's a very clear beginning, middle, and end. And that's something we're always trying to do in these pieces. So that when... A, a, a funder is looking at them. They say, yeah, this is a full movie. This isn't just a, you know, a YouTube. This isn't a news segment. This is a movie. And um, so, yeah, those are the, 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 the kind of the checkpoints that we look for. Hello. Uh, hi. Uh, one of the things that was a little surprising to me about the, the first one was Digital Wars. Uh, was how deep it went in one particular direction, especially about that Seth Rich anecdote. Uh, and I don't know if that was a response to the strengths of the material or maybe some of the weaknesses in the material to go that kind of go down that wormhole a little bit. But uh, I didn't, I'm wondering your take on the effectiveness of something like that. It wasn't about the characters themselves, but it certainly gave a flavor of the kinds of things that were going to be talked about. Yeah, I think that was an example of fake news. Um, Later in the trailer, there's another example with Debbie Wasserman Schultz where she's sort of vilified for not standing during a salute to a patriot. Or it wasn't true, but you know, it, there was they made hay about it on conservative websites. So she talks about that. Um, so there were it was kind of a show and tell. Like you have the experts talking about fake news, and then you're actually showing examples. So that's, that's an important thing to do, too, is that you set up the interview where they explain something, and then you show a scene that backs it up. Yeah, sizzles tend to be a lot less subtle than, than the movies, you know? And that, people shouldn't be shy away from that, you know? They need to be dumbed down. They need to be really clear and, and kind of... Um, they have to make sense. Yeah, and, and the movie's... It's not the movie. The movie's going to be very smart and subtle and have all this nuance and texture, but you got four or five minutes to make it really clear how this is going to hit all these different moments. So we try not to be too subtle in, in these pieces. We try to kind of find the big, you know, broad moments that kind of hit the, the topic right head on. And you also want to have a good mix of interview plus verite moment because it gets boring just to watch talking heads back to back to back so you want to see these subjects like living and breathing and having lunch and you know going for a walk and just doing whatever is going to make them seem like a real human being because that's really interesting to watch too hello hello uh, my name is jesse thanks so much for showing these clips uh, Speaking of beginning, middle, and end, like a conventional movie trailer will usually sort of tease or leave you with a cliffhanger, like what, what's going to happen to the main character, what's, what's, you know, how's this going to resolve. If you know how your film resolves or ends, do you feel like it's best in these sizzles to still have a bit of that cliffhanger, what happens? Let, let much less so. 
You know, we're we are less worried about showing. You know, when we're doing trailers for an audience or like a release trailer, a theatrical trailer, we're, we're worried about audience expectations. We're worried about giving away plot points. For sizzle trailers, we're not. We're trying to show why this movie is going to be good and why somebody should write a big check for it. I mean, really, honestly. So we're we're trying to put the best material in it, and. Um, you know, often what happens, though, is that we're, we're contracted to do these so early in the process that they don't always have their ending. But um, more, I think the bigger issue is that we don't worry about, you know, blowing plot points in these because we want you to watch them and say, like, wow, this is going to be a really full, full experience. Um, a theatrical trailer is different. This is a private viewing it's going around to you know uh, funders or networks. It's not going public. It's not going on YouTube. So and it shouldn't. It should be used for the purpose of trying to raise money, and um, therefore you shouldn't worry about you know giving away too much. Thank you. The more you talk about it, it seems like the the more the less this is really appropriate for general public consumption. Yeah. It seems really not to. E or even like a Kickstarter, or maybe there's a variation. We've done Kickstarters, you, and we. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, just we've done pieces that are not different. Like you could take free money and put it on Kickstarter. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You could take any of these and put it on right. Kickstarter. It, but, it, but it's just where you're going with your yeah. with to try to raise the money, you know. And I I know some people um, they send these first. Sometimes they're like they're they're trying to get a meeting with with a network, and they'll send right. here's our sizzle. Can we have a meeting? And that is their way in right. to show the sizzle. And sometimes it's they get the meeting and, and then they show the sizzle. Sometimes it's part of a pitch program and it's a very kind of you know intense situation where everybody's going up on stage and pitching their project. And it, it helps in the room too when somebody has a good sizzle. Sometimes it's not even a question of what's the best project, but sometimes I've been a pitch judge and sometimes the person with the best sizzle just kind of helps the room. You see it more as a movie. So, yeah. Sorry. We're going to go to the last question. I just want to insert one thing, quick thing, and that is, Jeremy, you're, you, do you have another screening at Doc MYC? I don't. Okay, I'm, very I'm good. Done, yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure of that. But again, his movie opens next Wednesday, yeah, it, Thanksgiving. No, it opens on Wednesday the 21st at the Quad Cinema. It yeah, is called do. The World Before Your Feet. Yeah. Watch. And uh, it'll be at the Quad for probably a week plus. Well, yeah. Um, I want to mention, and he's my guest this week, tomorrow's episode of Film Wax Radio. Just check it out. We talked for a little while. Anyway, thank you for waiting. Your yeah, question. No worries. And then we'll, we'll say goodbye. Wilson. Uh, loved your film I saw it the other day. Oh, awesome. Thank you. It was great. Uh, my question is this, and also I've, I've seen a couple of the pitch contests as well, so watched all the sizzles, watched the stuff. And because we didn't, these are amazing, but because we didn't see um, how they all ended, how much do you put in the sizzle versus the accompanying one sheet? You know, like, is all the information always like, this is going to be 90 minutes, this is what we're doing. Do you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, how much has to be just visual, assuming they're not going to look at a one sheet? Or what's that level like? I, I mean, I think that we try to, you know, as much as you saw in a couple examples, there's some details, you know, oh, we're going to embed for two years or whatever. We don't get into a lot of, like, uh, bullet points in these sizzles. Right. You know, we're not going to say anything that is kind of, on the paper, we'll probably leave it. The, let them leave it on paper. These are really just about kind of the experience of of watching it as a viewer. So every time we do add lo some of those bullet points, it it can take people out of the story. You you're reminded that it's like, oh, this is some kind of promotional piece. So we try not to do that a lot. We try to kind of limit that, um, and we want it to exist on its own as a as a little four or five minute piece that anyone could watch and anyone could say like, wow, that's going to be a cool movie. You know, and, and I think like a one sheet, you want the sizzle reel to be that you get the gist, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Uh, the cool. other thing is, uh, I think this is our last point, but they could also be repurposed in a way. We've worked on stuff that was used for a, um, a documentary feature and then the, the producers decided, no, we actually want to turn this into a series. And then we repositioned it mm. and, and made it something that could now go out as a series pitch. And it wasn't much different 
from the documentary feature. It still had the same sort of DNA, but it, we, they then used the same piece for the series pitch. So they can be pivoted and used in different ways. Well, I think we are out of time, but I wanted to thank uh, Eric and, and Meredith and everybody at DocMYC and you guys for coming out this afternoon. And I want to thank, of course, Shannon and Jeremy. Uh -huh.